to us, O Lord, to put on the armor of our Christian warfare with prayer and fasting, that we, who are to fight against all spiritual wickedness, may be defended by the power of abstinence. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who hatest nothing that thou hast made, and thus forgive the sins of them that are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may attain of from you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission of our sins. Grant us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please let us search for the readings. The Old Testament reading is taken from the book of the prophet Joel, chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, and from 12 to 17. Joel 2, reading from verse 1. Let us hear the word of God. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy hill. Let all who live in the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is close at hand, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and blackness, like dawn spreading across the mountains, a large and mighty army comes, such as never was in ancient times, nor will ever be in ages to come. Even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning, 
Rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love, and he relents from sending calamity. Who knows? He may turn and relent and leave behind a blessing, grain offerings and drink offerings for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Declare a holy fast. Call a sacred assembly. Gather the people. Consecrate the assembly. Bring together the elders. Gather the children, those nursing at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her chamber. Let the priest who minister before the Lord weep between the portico and the altar. Let them say, spare your people, Lord. Do not make your inheritance an object of scorn, a byword among the nations. Why should they say among the peoples, where is their God? This is the word of God. The epistle is taken from St. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 5, from verse 20b through to 6, chapter 6, 1 to 10. Second Corinthians chapter 5, reading from verse 20b. Let us hear the word of God. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As God's fellow workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. For he says, in the time of my favor, I heard you, and in the day of salvation, I helped you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. We put no stumbling block in anyone's path so that our ministry will not be discredited. Rather, as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way, in endurance, in troubles, hardships, and distresses, in beatings, imprisonments, and riots, in hard work, sleepless nights, and hunger, in purity, understanding, patience, and kindness, in the Holy Spirit, and in sincere love, in truthful speech, and in the power of God, with weapons of righteousness in the right hand and in the left, through glory and dishonor, bad report and good report, genuine yet regarded as impostors, known yet regarded as unknown, dying and yet we live on, beaten and yet not killed, sorrowful yet always rejoicing, Poor, yet making many rich, having nothing, and yet possessing everything. This is the word of God. Graduate him, ancient and modern 160, him 160.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the reading of the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 6, reading from verse 1 to 6, and continuing from 16 to 21. Glory be to you, O Lord. Matthew, chapter 6, beginning at the first verse. Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets, to be honored by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. When you fast, do not look somber, as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show others they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your Father, who is unseen. And your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moths and vermin destroy, and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves Treasures in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to be. Shall we now prepare our hearts and minds to listen to the Ash Wednesday's sermon by singing each in the morning, 702, in 702. speak in the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please let us sit. Joel chapter 2 verse 12. Joel chapter 2 verse 12. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your hearts, with weeping and mourning. Return to the Lord your God, for he is the Lord. For he is gracious and merciful. And indeed, 
you and I will have to turn unto the Lord our God. Not only us, our whole communities, our whole nation, and indeed the whole world. For now we are at our wit's end. There's no help in us. And if God does not descend and get himself in the affairs, involved in the affairs of man, I dare tell you that that will be the end of the human race. So we pray that God himself will come and intervene, especially in this pandemic, and to save us. Amen. My dear Christian friends, the message of Ash Wednesday is very simple. Remember, man, remember. And if conversion is necessary, then we must work on it now and not tomorrow because we are going to turn to dust. We came from dust. And it can happen at any moment in time. And I'll just, our recent history tells us, people have just been moving with, chatting with, in a week or two, and they are gone. So if there is need for any conversion, it is now and not later. But what's of penance, my dear brothers and sisters, are only useful and they are just only a means to an end. And the end is an inner conversion of love of God and love of man, walking in the ways of God. So as the ashes are traced on our foreheads, it just gives us meaning which we would want to apply to ourselves. Else it would just be a formality, symbolism, and that's the end of it. But we need to make this symbolism very meaningful at this time of penance, at this time of Lent. And making it meaningful, let us also let the world know what is assailing us at this moment in time. By the grace of God, we have yet seen yet another Ash Wednesday, the first day of the um, Christian calendar of Lent, uh, beginning of our 40-day fasting and prayer, a period we have to look at our relationship with Christ and God and how we stand in him. And the passage from Joel, which is very incisive, had been so identified with Ash Wednesday, but it was written initially at the what we call invasion of locusts in Israel. They were eating the crops and seriously causing panic among the people who feared hunger and possible starvation. The whole country was therefore called upon to repent and to beg God to destroy the locusts, save the crops, and spare the people from suffering. That's why the whole world have to go on our knees and call on God and beg him to save us from the pandemic. Because it's causing so much havoc, much more, much more than the locust caused in Israeli times. The test is easily applicable to Lent. Because Lent too is a universal call for all people to reform, to repent and to renew their lives by resolving to live holy lives, keeping with the teachings of the gospel of Jesus Christ. There's too much in this nation that you can talk about. In not living righteous lives. The prophet points to the fact that works of penance, if not related to our inner conversion, to love God and to work the works of God is worthless. So the ashes raised on our foreheads will be useless if there's no transformation, a renewal in us. Rend your hearts and not your garments. It's an oriental symbolism of regret and repentance. So whatever happened in the past, God is merciful and willing to forgive us, my dear brothers and sisters. If we'll be honest with ourselves too, we'll realize that we have, since the last Lent, gone our own ways. We've not mastered certain habits which had led us to sin. You know, we like to do good and we resolve. But along the way, we go our own way and don't do what we have resolved to do. Sometimes there are so much regrets and fears in us. Guilt in our lives. Because of these frailties, God calls on us to return. Come home. 
let's come back to our first love that we had with for God when we first became Christians and to live the sins which so entangle us falling on our knees and surrendering totally to God and making a decision to stop playing God and let, let God take charge of our lives that is the message of Lent so as the priest distributes the ashes tracing the sign of the cross today we did it ourselves every Christian should remember that we are dust and we shall turn to dust so that we turn away from sin and evil and be faithful to God to love him with all our hearts and to love our neighbor as ourselves and when the, the, the words are pronounced it tells us very just it gives us a very simple message that life here on earth will end our life here on earth my dear brothers and sisters will end like our brothers and sisters whom we have seen off a week two three four a month ago so let us prepare for that day the gospel tells us about three things that we need to do to turn our hearts to god in the same way our epistle tells us so many things about what we need to do to have that right to walk with god and when we go home let's read them again but for the gospel it tells us prayer heart to heart conversation with god fasting giving up something that our heart likes many times many a time now we we'll put our minds on food but i love what um and Pope francis said so much fast from anger fast from deceitfulness fast from lies fast from stealing so it's not only food but there are virtues that we need to pursue and follow and leave the evil things behind us and then the third one which the gospel talks about is arms given given from the hearts to the needy the destitutes these ancient practices of fasting prayer and arms giving are recommended for our personal and community improvements during Lent. but it should be an everyday part of a christian's life an everyday part of the christian's life we're just amplifying it at this period so you see that the message of um, matthew is similar to the message of joel when you go further in our gospel reading says external works of penance have no value in themselves it makes rather makes us hypocrites but we must relate penance to real conversion to god the danger of hypocrisy is always around us and with us now uh, we are human it's nobody's business to know what you give up for lent it's no one's business it is enough that your heavenly father knows it and he sees it that's why he says wash your face anoint your head it's your heavenly father who sees it who will reward you and beyond these um, traditional practices many other devotions are done during um lenten periods certain spiritual projects are undertaken and pursued and some are these you might resolve to forgive somebody who says he's your enemy you might resolve to assist somebody who is an unfortunate person and you can meditate on the powerful themes of ash wednesday and the sundays of lent sit down and reflect on them the first Sunday was the remember man remember then second sunday temptation and sin you reflect on them third sunday god's call and our response to him the fourth sunday is the lord in our midst or not the fifth faith and unbelief the sixth newness of life and the seventh death and life reflect on these why do we want to do these things because we want our hearts to be like god's heart that's what Jude tells us let us rend our hearts not our garments so let us go before god in our closets in our closets this lenten period and tell god as the psalmist tells us in psalm 51 verse 1 and 2 7 and 10 and others have mercy upon me O lord 
according to thy great mercies. Wash me thoroughly from my sin. Purge me, O Lord, with this up, and I'll be clean. Wash me, and I'll be whiter than snow. And let us resolve to live Christ-like life this Lenten period. Let us not give in to temptation. And as we, the cross we traced on our foreheads, as we're doing them, let us continue to ponder on the words which are spoken to us. Remember, O oh man, thou art dust, and unto dust shall thou return. Turn away from sin and believe in the gospel. Let this continue to ring in our hearts and in our minds and let us reflect on them. And finally, let us make sure that this lens will always be on our knees and ask God to descend on this earth and show his mighty power at work in the lives of his people and in this world for all to see that he reigns in the affairs of men. For indeed, this pandemic is causing so much havoc. And with God not intervening, I can assure you, my dear brothers and sisters, there is nothing, indeed nothing, that man can do. All our scientists, all our medics, all our researchers are at their wits end now. Only God. Let us pray and call upon him. In the name of God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We'll turn to a very short time of prayer. We are told to repent and believe in the gospel. This is God's word to us today. And to remember that we are dust, and unto dust are we going to return. We have listened to that word. Let us turn to our God in prayer. And I ask your prayers for the grace of repentance during Lent. As we begin our 40 days of Lent, we ask God to raise in our minds an awareness of sin in our lives. And may he give us a deep desire to turn to him. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray for a desire to be ambassadors of Christ. St. Paul teaches us, my dear brothers and sisters, that we are to be Jesus Christ's ambassadors at this time of Lent. Let us renew our desire to witness to the good news of God's love, which is revealed in Jesus Christ. Let's speak to the world about our Christ. For this we pray to the Lord. Let us pray for grace to grow in prayer. We ask for a spirit of honesty before God, that we might relish the time of prayer. Not regarding it as a burden, but a time of joy and reflection in the presence of our God. Let us pray to the Lord. And let us pray for a true spirit of, of penance during Lent. May we learn, my dear brothers and sisters, to follow the teaching of Jesus Christ and discipline ourselves do lent by prayer and fasting and acts of charity so that we may have a true understanding of what is of lasting value in this life. Let us pray to the Lord. And let us pray for God's intervention to stop this pandemic. For indeed it is creating so much havoc to humankind. Only God. Let us pray to the Lord. And let us pray that God will touch and heal those affected with the virus and provide protection 
for his children. As we pray, let us remember all members of Accra Ray Church. And finally, let us pray for discipline in the body politic. To abide and adhere to the guidelines, advice, and counsels and keep to the protocols which are given us. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray. Creator God, our bodies have been marked today with the ashes of repentance. Listen to the prayers we have made and in your love, Father, grant what we need through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Please bow your heads and pray for God's blessings. The Father of mercies has given us an example of unselfish love in the sufferings of his only son. Through your service of God and neighbor, May you receive his countless blessings. Amen. Amen. You believe that by his dying, Christ destroyed death forever. May he give you everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Jesus humbled himself for our sake. May you follow his example and share in his resurrection. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest and remain with you this Ash Wednesday, throughout the Lenten period, and always. Amen. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, the Mass is ended. Let us go forth in peace to love and to serve the Lord. <laughs>